200 years, the bulk of the British public's information has been printed on sheets of paper in London's Fleet Street. But the national newspaper industry is painfully succumbing to the logic of electronic information, which needs fewer people to handle it, and eventually will not even need paper to carry it into our homes. The shape of things to come became clear when Eddie Shah announced his intention to publish a national, which, although edited in London, would be distributed electronically to printing works in Manchester, Birmingham and Heathrow, saving massively on printing and distribution costs. The way Fleet Street is now, the writing must be on the wall. Well, that's up to Fleet Street to change. I mean, you've got to remember, I didn't create the environment that Fleet Street find itself in. I, it was there before I was born. All I'm doing is bring provincial technology that's been there for a long, long time into na the national newspaper scene. I think the big difference in the future, possibly, will be that whereas national newspapers today are looked on as Fleet Street, the future national newspaper won't be Fleet Street, it, but it'll be a very, I think, strong and sort of vibrant national newspaper scene where you can have, because of the low cost of production, you'll be able to produce daily sports papers, daily fashion papers, all sorts of papers, special interest group papers, which you can produce for very low break even, so maybe up to 60 or 70,000 copies a day. And once you've got that going, it'll produce a much more diverse press, it'll bring about a multiplicity of titles, and it'll have a much wider base of ownership as well, and I think that's the important thing. Appropriately called today, Shah's paper will be in colour and entirely composed on computer. The weather map, for example, after being created on this machine, will then be transmitted along a network to the three printing centres. No ink or paper is used until today hits the presses. On a conventional paper, you'd have pencil and paper, and you'd start drawing. You'd probably find your pictures, and you might say, right, we'll put a decent picture there. We'll take this headline across uh, two decks of, let's say, 48, 48. You draw it in like that, add in some headlines here. I think on this page, you'd make it 48 across four. And you'd write down your headlines and edit by guessing. Whereas on this machine, of course, just by the press of a button, then the story comes up in one screen and the column there. As I scroll down, the cursor follows where I am in the story. I can change it at any moment I want. There we have Olution. Let me just for the sake of it make it blue. Go back out, come down, and as I do that, the story goes on and on. And as I come to the end, here's the word, it tells me it fits. I then close that, press this button, and I come to the next story, open it, here we are, down I come. This tells me where I am in this copy. I change it if I want to, and so we go on, and I'm fitting. I've been to the States where machines like this are now in everyday use in many newspapers. Many countries that I suppose we English would regard as backward in our bad moments. Um, some in the Middle East, Turkey, Greece, for instance, are using this sort of equipment and our color equipment as a daily habit. In real terms, I think apart from Turkey and Greece, the sort of technology we're going to be using is still not being used in the world because Although everything we're using that you see around you here is, has, is tried and tested, nobody's ever bolted the whole lot together in one go, which is what we've done. And I think that's going to be the difference. And I think we will be the most advanced newspaper in the world in the way it's produced when that happens. You are still, at the end of the day, going to produce something that uses ink and newspaper. Uh, well, can I, can I t change you on that as well? Because I think that's changing as well. Because one of the things we've done a lot of research into is the biggest thing we found that put people off buying modern newspapers was the ink that comes off in their hands. So even new technology applies to that because the way that we put the ink on through, through control by computers and the type of ink mixing with the paper we're using should in fact ensure that even the ink doesn't come off in your hands. So we are not just, it's, what you see around you is not all that we're changing. We're actually also changing the way that we print newspapers and I think that is a big change as well. But it's now possible to produce a paper that doesn't use any ink or paper at all. It's delivered straight into its readers' homes by telephone line. Micronet produces 30,000 pages of news and information on computer technology 
which is updated day and night. Its editor, Simon Darcy, introduced me to exactly one half of his editorial staff. Graphics on the database. I see. And also looks after the AI area, the artificial intelligence area. That's fifth generation stuff. That's right, yes, we try and cover as much as we can. You're keeping up with the Japanese? Ah, uh, trying to. It's not easy. I'll introduce you to Sid Smith, who is my colleague's deputy editor. I see. What are you working on this morning? Well, I'm summing an article, actually, that one of our freelancers put in from home. Yeah. And um, obviously, before it goes public, we need to sub it. It's a very easy process for them to put it into their uh, home micro, in their back bedroom, or wherever, but we need to check it before it goes out. Does it need a lot of work? Uh, it's not too badly written, actually. I think we'd better hire him. <laughs> so you've got a total of almost 30,000 mm -hmm. pages, and yet you only seem to have uh, four or five people there putting it together. That's right, yes. It is um, quite unique in the fact that a lot of the information that goes up onto the database comes from journalists working from home. So there are some 30 or 40 journalists who have specific areas of interest, and they can update the database from their own home using their own micros, very similar to the ones we have here. So they never have to come near a, a news office in central London no. or Fleet Street? No, it's all done down the telephone lines. Micronet is a value-added network which runs on home terminals of the Prestel database. It's the next stage in the inevitable coming together of the new technology and the old journalistic skills of information gathering, a potential which even the latest pioneers don't completely appreciate. You can't pick up a terminal and take it on the train with you. You can't go to the loo with it. You can't do the sort of, you can't cut out your favorite picture and look at it and, and keep it for a few days of a, of a goal that was scored or a moment that you enjoyed. So I, I think newspapers will be around for a long, long time. Uh, long term, I see being able to program your computer with various names of journalists you particularly like, various sports that you're uh, a, a habit of, uh, of looking at, and being able to program your computer at four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning to log on to a Prestel Micronet and then download very rapidly information which will then be printed out. So instead of sitting on the train in the morning with your Times, Guardian, Telegraph, whatever, you will have a printout with all your favorite journalists, your sports pages, cartoons. You can make up your own newspaper. You can make up your own newspaper. <laughs> The time is not so far away when stockbrokers, lawyers, and even newspaper publishers will all depend on computer networks to store, process, and deliver whatever information is their stock in trade. For these information industries, not being on such a computer network will soon mean not being in business at all. Britain cannot opt out of this information revolution. Computers and modern telecommunications are no respecters of national boundaries. If we don't develop computer networks, then somebody else somewhere will. The future of wealth and job creation in this country depends on Britain moving fast into electronic publishing now.